Today we're kind of starting off this video in a little different area. This is my little editing room, so if it's a little bit messed back there, excuse it, because I came in here to strictly talk to you guys because I want to talk a little bit more about kind of like my feelings, especially after I posted my last video about me wanting the girls to start daycare and I couldn't really talk with the girls in the other room. David is here and this video is more of real time. Let's go ahead and just set this up. I'm on the floor because I just feel like it. But um, this video is more in real time because that video that you've seen with the girls going to daycare is a little bit older, not that old, but uh, I actually started, got the job that I applied for and I started working already. So I guess I am no longer a strictly stay at home mom at this point, but I definitely wanted to speak on a little bit of that video because for some reason I feel like my video wasn't really perceived in a way that I meant it because I feel like my video if you haven't watched that video please make sure you go back to that video so you understand where I'm coming from but I think a lot of the comments kind of misunderstood the reason that I was stressing out or sad because it seemed like that I was upset about the development of my kids and that is the reason why I want them in daycare and that I was scared of them going to daycare and all this stuff, which is completely not true. I, I'm not afraid of them to do, go to daycare. I kind of went through those stages. Yes, there's always gonna be something to piece of back in my head, but the point of my video was more so talking about my sadness about them being alone all the time. So when you are a stay at home or even just, you know, a parent that is the only one around your kids, when that is happening so often and now years are going by and it's really only you and your partner that is around your kids, you start to feel a little bit sad. You start to feel overwhelmed because also too, another thing that I was trying to get out was that we are stretched thin. We are our kids everything. Our, our kids teacher, our kids providers, our kids friends, we're our they playmates, we're everything to our kids. And it doesn't allow us to relax even when it comes to our relationship. It doesn't give us a chance to really enjoy each other to be the best version of ourselves and i think these are sides that people don't make sure that they address it's one thing for people to be like it's me and to have a family member come over and watch your kids once a week or once every two weeks or so or just come and visit and address your kids but when that doesn't happen everyone have lies but when you start to see your kids shaping and molding into the person they are going to be and to feel like, dang, like they're only gonna remember us or when they grow up, it's gonna be like, where is this person, where is that person and I can't answer that for them. It starts to make me sad because I, I grew up like that. I grew up not around my family, only around immediate family and growing up it didn't really bother me as much but as i was starting to get older to understand who people were it it, it did bother me so i just kind of foresee that future pain and it hurts me when you're always in a place where you don't have time to be in your relationship you're unable to have a date 
we are able to get away without the kids. It starts to weigh thin because you forget about your partner. You start to lack and you start to create issues in your relationship because you're so drained that we don't focus on our relationship and we start to notice that we are overwhelmed and stressed in. So that's how kind of the conversation um, came up about them going to daycare. Yes, a piece of it is development when it comes to not knowing how to socialize, don't know how to share. Also too, the reason why I, feel, I felt in that video that we're failing is because there are parents that know how to teach their kids things, know how to even simple things, teach them how to eat, teach them how to what are socks and this and that. And we do our best, but we aren't good at it either. Sometimes I have to remind myself to speak and to talk and to have conversations with my kids so they can really pick up on things because, you know, I am kind of an introvert, extrovert, saying David is the same way, but kind of like in between. So a lot of times we don't even like speak, actually talk. We just kind of do things how we do it. And sometimes I have to remind us like, hey, communicate to say, hey, this is what we're doing. Hey, this is what we're going, you know, and being that type of way, it's just better that someone else comes in and help teach them um, the small things. Yes, we are capable, but we just need help at this point. So that is what that was coming from. So I hope that kind of gives more uh, direction, but I'm more so hoping that if you are feeling the same way or is in the same kind of situation where you don't have family and close people and you're kind of stretched in, it is okay. It's okay to not be okay. That is what I tell myself all the time and that's the reason why I'm able to be vulnerable here on YouTube. I am a person that definitely protects my feelings and I feel like here on YouTube, I can, it's a safe space for me. So that is kind of where I'm coming from. My kids are growing and they are lonely, they are bored, they are under the confines of a mom who is battling chronic anxiety, which prevents them from learning a lot. Also, the other day we took them to the park. This might be a side note, but we took them to the park to try to get them out, which is another thing with my anxiety, but we got them out, we got them on the slides, got them swinging, and someone stole her tablet. So it's little things like that that just contributes to me wanting to protect them and to over protect them in a way to where it's preventing them to make mistakes it's preventing them to grow and to explore and to be curious and to learn and dealing with that that's another reason why i need the help of them being in child care because with them they're not going to be so they're going to be able to learn more basically they're going to be able to not be under that type of pressure to not do so much things. So if you are a parent or a person who deals with anxiety, even mild depression, or you just feel like you're you're just smothering, I, I, at least I do. I feel like I am smothering my kids. I cannot help it because everything is a trigger for me. I don't really want to talk about too deep in my anxiety and other stuff and what I'm doing about it because that is for another video. But the main side of this video, I also want to communicate uh, about me working. I will not be talking about where I work, what I do, anything of the sort, any ideas of what I do because I had signed up in the I know I do YouTube and everything, so they will be. So um, I, I can't speak and I won't speak anything of the sort um about my job but what i can tell you is i have been working for two weeks i have a good amount of days off so i do long hour shifts so it's weird because right now it works out to where david is still home so it's like we still get a good amount of time with each other the reason why i chose the company that i work for because it allows me to have a long time with david when the time permits so 
when and that's not gonna happen until we get them into daycare which probably won't be for another month so which should be very interesting so we will be probably doing vlogs about our trying to find daycare experience and stuff like that but outside of that i feel with me working it feels honestly good to have money <laughs> again and what i mean is my personal money what i can maneuver things and buy things for girls as much as i want to well obviously we got budget um because child we trying to get a fence now because we got a pterodactyl outside you know what i'm saying a whole dinosaur and we need gates as long as we're gonna be here but i kind of want to move that's kind of getting off sidetrack i do really like my job though i really do uh finally like a job where it's easy for me it's not too hard on me physically even though it's long shift i think this is the happy medium of work but it i think it's not gonna really hit me as far as how i feel about working until they're in daycare and that's where our world is gonna flip because i still do get to spend a good amount of time but the days I work it's very very hard for me to spend any time with the girls because uh, I leave before they wake up and I they're asleep by the time I come home so it's for days in a row I don't I don't really get to spend any time with them and I'm surprised how not emotional is not making me. Y'all know I love to shed the tears, y'all. But it's not too bad. The only thing is I am trying to find out how I'm going to work and handle YouTube. Because on them days there's no way. So that's the reason why it's actually been a good amount of time not actually posting. Because I actually started working these past two weeks. Which... My job actually started really fast after I posted that video. So I have some catching up to do. So I'm doing fine. Um, I'm okay with working. Working feels a little weird to me. I come to realize that eventually I definitely do want to get to a point on here where I am doing very well. Um, 2020 has been trash and I am ready for the new year so this is the day before New Year's so I hope you guys are spending a lot of good and wonderful time with your family hugging them close and praying for a better 2021 that you guys receive a lot of blessings in your life as I pray for us so I definitely love you guys and happy new year now I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.